Welcome back guys. This is part five of our house flipping tips series. Today's video is going to be about doing a house extension and what to do with the space if you're allowed to do one. Should you add a bedroom? Should you add a bathroom? Or should you just add some living space? We're going to go over all of those. If these videos are helpful, don't forget like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us know what videos we should do and if we're on the right path. So let's get into it. Very first thing I'm looking for when I walk into a home is how can I maximize the space and are there any issues? What's the size of the master bedroom? Is it too small? What about the master bath? Could I add a bedroom somewhere? How's the living space? Can people actually have a couch, TV, and all that set up? Or do I need to really consider extending? If I do need to extend, let me take a walk outside. How's the covered patio? Has it already been enclosed? Or can I go further out? So I'm looking at the space first to see what is feasible. Right alongside that is needing to be in compliance. What that means is you need to get permits, you need to make sure that you're doing everything by the rules like setbacks, which is how close can you build to the fence? Sometimes you need more space than you have. You need to make sure you check all those boxes, but I'm looking, is this feasible and can I be in compliance? That is the very first thing I do. The next thing I do, of course, is just finding out if it's even worth it. Sometimes you'll see the space or want to do the extension. You're like, okay, that's possible, but should you do it? You need to run the numbers. You need to check everything with the comps. You need to see, okay, if I'm going to add square feet, am I already the biggest house in the neighborhood? Well, if you don't have a comp that has sold for more, that might be tough to get your return back out of it. How many bedrooms and bathrooms does your house have compared to the others in the neighborhood? If it's a 55 and older and it's a two bedroom or three bedroom, you might not want to go to a four or five. That just doesn't make much sense and you're probably not going to have a lot of demand for it. So yes, I'm going to look at the market demand. I'm going to see what type of people are moving there and what do they actually want to see in their homes. I'm going to look at what the construction costs are going to be and does my budget allow me to spend more money and am I at least going to not just break even but make a decent profit. If I'm gonna break even or make it a little bit more, it might not be worth the additional risk and the additional capital it's gonna take and time to do it all. So I'm gonna evaluate all that in this step and make sure that it checks that box. If it does, I'm moving on to the next step. The next step that I'm looking at is the overall layout. So it's not the space because I already looked to see, okay, oh, there is a 10 by 10 or 10 by 12 area over there that I could convert to a bedroom, or there is a covered patio, so I could add an extension, but I need the layout to flow. I don't want it to look like a little jigsaw puzzle. I need to make sure that the flow is good. In fact, most of the time when we're remodeling homes, we're trying to open up the concept. So I need to make sure I'm not closing that concept too much by adding in these other items, right? That covered patio in the back. What does it come off of? Does it come off of the kitchen? Does it come off of the living room? How's the door? Which direction is the doorway going to go? Does it come right out into the communal living area? If it does, well, you might want to have it be a den still with the closet and a window so you can count it as a bedroom. However, you really want to think of the needs and make sure it aligns and that you're not blocking the access to the backyard. Well, if there was a sliding glass door and now you enclose that, what about the lighting that needs to come into the main living space? All of those things change when you add an extension. Now, beyond looking at the overall layout flow, you really need to pay attention to how many bedrooms and bathrooms your house has, how many the comparisons have, and understand that different amount of bedrooms and bathrooms create different sort of demand, which means money or it means speed to sell. Your house ends up more unique. It's going to take longer. For example, when you start off small, sometimes it can be hard. A two bedroom, one bath. Okay. Should I add a bathroom to make it a two, two? Should I add a bedroom to make it a three, one? Well, a three, one gets a little bit tough. You have so many people in the home and only sharing one bathroom, but nobody wants a two bedroom house. So most of the time you really want to try to add a bedroom and a bathroom. If it's a two, one, if it's a three, one, it's a no brainer. You should definitely be adding a bathroom to the house to make it a three, two. It makes it a lot more desirable. 
you definitely shouldn't be going to a four bedroom with only one bathroom. A four bedroom, two bath? Okay, now what? Do you make it a five two? I wouldn't recommend it. A five bedroom household is definitely gonna want more than just two bathrooms. So if you have a four bedroom house, your next upgrade should be for a bathroom and then possibly that fifth bedroom. The other thing you should know is you don't get the same amount of money for all the different numbers of bedrooms that your house has. A three bedroom and a four bedroom house are the most desirable size of a home. If you go up to a five bedroom house, there's a smaller pool of people that need that big of a home. Now bathrooms, everyone almost always wants more bathrooms. When they invite guests over, they want a specific bathroom for the guests. We are literally just selling a house in a retirement community. It was a two bedroom, two bath home. We added a bedroom. It's now a three bedroom, two bath home. Several of our buyers were asking for that third bathroom because usually when you add that third bedroom, you found dead space like we did in the family room. It didn't need to be that big. Well, that means that third bedroom in the family room, along with the bedroom down the hall, have to share the hallway bath. So their concern is, well, if I have guests come and stay with me, the hallway bath is gonna be their go-to bathroom. And of course the master has their own. If they invite other people to come over when that is going on, they don't want their long-term guests to have to share with their short-term guests. It's always a good idea to try to get to a three bathroom state at any size of home, but you have to run your numbers. The next thing you need to do is look at the numbers. We're looking to do a cost benefit analysis, right? Does a, adding a bedroom cost the same as adding a bathroom? The answer is no. The bathroom costs dramatically more, even though sometimes square feet wise it's smaller, but a bathroom's gonna have cabinetry, a toilet, a shower, all the plumbing expense. There's a lot more that goes into a bathroom. Now adding additional living space, that might not be as bad. That might be closer to the cost of adding a bedroom. A bedroom is just usually adding up two walls, a door, and a little bit of walls for a closet. Living space can sometimes be tearing down a wall, of course, creating more an open concept. But beyond that, if you're doing an extension, now you're adding a lot more cost because you need to extend the roof if there's not one. You need to add external walls, which cost more. Running the electrical, probably pouring concrete on top, right, to raise the flooring up to the house level. And of course, permit costs if you're going on the outside as well. So the costs really do add up. So you want to run the numbers all three scenarios or a fourth one if you come up with a different idea and see which one stands out or is the better choice in that regard now it's time for you to make a decision you're going to take all that information and ask yourself is it feasible and can i get a permit did i run my roi and i'm getting a good financial return for doing the additional work does the house flow still feel great or did it mess it up too much what's my number of bedroom and bath is it the right amount for the house that I'm trying to sell compared to the comparisons and how much money I wanna get for the house? And then of course, I'm trying to balance my budget with my return. Guys, I hope you really like this video. I wish I learned this stuff when I first started. If you like this stuff, like the video, subscribe to the channel. This is just part five. Go watch part six as that's gonna be coming out shortly. And if you haven't, go watch one through four. Guys, we're putting out tons of content. So see you in the next video. Peace.